Hey guys, Zach for the path here. Today I'm sitting with someone a little new. We got Don here. Don, what are we looking at? We're looking at my Orbea Wild FS. Uh, this is the, it was the M Team mm -hmm. when I originally bought it and I bought the Team uh, because I didn't want the, the next bike up, the Limited has XTR and I, I just didn't see the point of spending the extra money on XTR. So I knew I was going to change some things. So that's the the build originally, but there's a lot's changed on it. I was going to say, let's start going through some of those changes. What are the, some of the main things you've done so far on it? Yeah, I think um, specifically the cockpit, especially um, I switched to an I-9 stem. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter. It's a shorter bike. So I wanted a little bit longer reach. Normally I would run a shorter stem, but because of the length of this bike and the, the reach. I just wanted it to be as long as I could get it without getting weird. Um, I uh, put one up bars on, which I really do like a lot. They do have um, a damping effect and, and with the rev grips, I really do love those things. They, they really work. I like the material. These are the ergonomic uh, large, I think they're the sixes and I love them. They're expensive, but they're not expensive once you have the system. You just replace the grip um, and uh, so they're not too bad but I, I really do like them i put a wolf tooth ankle headset on it and that pushed the front end out a bit about 15 or 18 millimeters something like that mm -hmm. and slacked it out and then i i also raised the fork up to um 170. thank you for doing that <laughs> and um I, I really like it like that because it gets the front end is is 65.5 which is unusual for an enduro bike. It's a little steep, mm -hmm. but this made it just under 64. It's like 63.8 the way it is. Um, but raising up 170, got my bottom bracket where I wanted it. And with the, the cranks, um, it came with E13s. And when I switched them out, one of the reasons I switched them out is, you know, I, there was a few, few people that had those kind of fallen off. So I just didn't want to take that chance. And when I did it, the Hope makes a 165 and a 155. Mm -hmm. And I decided to try the shorter cranks. And it, it definitely felt a little weird at 155 at first. Right, because you're probably so used to coming off of something a little bit longer, maybe not necessarily 175, but if you came from a pedal bike, typical 170, maybe yeah. 165, going to something like these 155 has got to feel pretty drastically different. It, it, feels, it feels really strange at first because it definitely narrows up your stance. Um, bringing your feet a little bit closer towards the center line of the bike. Yeah, but that's not, it was not a bad thing and I've gotten used to it. And I like it a lot. 160s I think would be perfect, but they didn't make those. So, um, yeah, I like them a lot. And on the climbs, it is really cool. I mean, I am climbing up stuff and not hitting my feet on much now. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Extra, extra little bit of ground clearance you got there, a little bit more cadence focused, which a lot of the e-bikes seem to focus mainly towards supporting more than a rider's like torque input, mm -hmm. uh, respectively. They're gonna benefit more from having a little bit faster spin. So yeah, that all sounds like pretty good stuff, some good changes there. I also added the Wolf Tooth uh, dropper lever, which I really like, they're really smooth. And if you do have a crash, they're designed to break off instead of break the whole lever and then just replace that past plastic piece. That's a really good design. I actually, switch from the XT to the XTR shifter as well, just because they are, again, a little bit more precise and it just feels really good. There is a difference. That's the only XTR thing I have on this. I didn't get the, the um, M Limited because I didn't really want all the XTR stuff, but that was one thing I did like and switched that out. I do really love the Maxxis Asagai 2.5 downhill casing front and back. I run a um, tuba light, those new really light uh, inserts in the back, just to give me a little extra. I didn't realize you got those installed already. But yeah, I did. Nice. Yeah, they actually installed really easy too. They were not like fighting a kush koran. <laughs> That's I, what builds muscles, Don. Come yeah. on, show those guns off. Come on. Yeah. Well, I I can't do kush cores. I I just don't <laughs> want to do it. But the that's the more of a, that's more of like thumb abs than anything. Yeah. Well, I don't have those. Um, but that one went on super easy. It gives me a little bit extra. So I run about 26 pounds of pressure in the back and about 23, 24 in the front, depending. And it, I don't have to worry about dinging my rims anymore because it's just, it works. So 
I have the um, the Hope V4. Uh, these are the Tech 3s. They've come out with the Tech 4s. I actually have those ordered. <laughs> um, they'll be here someday. But uh, I love these brakes. They have a lot of power and a lot of modulation and a lot of adjustability. The reach and the uh, bite point adjustments really work. So if you're really finicky and you want a lot of adjustability, these are as adjustable as any, and it really makes a difference. You, you know, as your pads wear down or you know you're, you need a little bit of a bleed or whatever's going on, you can adjust it to get the same feel you always like, and I love that about them. And the new ones uh, are supposed to be more powerful, which is fantastic, so I just love them so much I ordered the new ones. I love these wheels. I mean, the i9 wheels are these are their These are their system wheels. So it's mm -hmm. the one-piece spoke and nipple design. Mm -hmm. Big old thick gauge. That's nice. Yeah, they're extremely durable. I mean, I have beat the heck out of these things. You've seen a few of the little dents in them. <laughs> um, I had a softball-sized rock come up and hit this wheel and take out one of my spokes. Like I was telling you earlier, I was lucky I had a couple extras, but it took you five minutes to fix it, and it was straight and perfect. So... I, I really do love these wheels, everything about them. Um, the performance is great. I don't worry about them no matter what I'm doing. Um, yeah, and, and the 690 points of engagement is gonna be hard to top. I mean, I know there's a few wheels. Personally, I won't run anything under 650, so <laughs> 690 is all good for me. Well, I mean, it's truly instant. And you know, the thing about, um, riding them on an e-bike too, especially on technical climbs, it really is um, an advantage because there's no pause whatsoever. So if you're in a spot where just a slight slip will cause you to have to dab, I, I... Well, especially if you're about to like ratchet up a tech section, you gotta cycle back really yeah, quick. Yeah, and to I get do back that quite it. a bit. I pump right. on, on technical sections and it's so nice because there's no pause. Right, exactly. It's just insulin back to driving that rear wheel. Mm -hmm. One thing I didn't mention is I, I really like that SQ Lab seat. I love that saddle. It is um, not a soft, comfy seat. I was gonna say that's like, but it is a really, really good saddle. It, it looks like NASA designed it. It's all like aero and. It feels like that's NASA an aero. designed it. Yeah, fits your know. butt nice and well. Yeah, that's well, all you can ask for. Yeah, if that fits good. Yeah, sure. I remember I tried it and I sat on it and was like. <laughs> Oh! Ow! Yeah. But that fits you, perfect. Yeah, I like it. That's all you can ask for. Mm -hmm. What made you go with the Wild as opposed to some of the other options in this Enduro Big Trail segment of e-bikes? Well, when I when I chose, you know, last year uh, I got this in August, and at that point in time, bikes were difficult to get. I had ridden a few, the Bullet. Um, I hadn't got a chance to try the Norco range, but based on all the numbers, I really liked that bike. I had gotten to ride this bike and I liked a lot. Um, and I just, what I did was I said, whichever one comes in first, uh, that's the one I'm gonna get. This one came in first. So I'm really glad it did. I, I really love this bike. It's, it is unique. And I'm anxious to see what they do with the, the 23. It's also orange. I love orange, yes. Something tells me that, yeah. 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 Uh, what were some of the main trails that you find yourself riding this bike on around locally? I, I really like San Clemente. I like uh, Sloppy Seconds. I like Ricky Bobby. I like, uh, uh, what's that other trail? Six there? Kids. Six Kids is awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really fun, steep. They have good jumps, good berms. They've got some nice features and they're very e-bike friendly. So I really like fast flow and tech. I like steep and this bike, it just loves all that. It, it really handles because it's a little bit smaller and it's not so big on tight technical, um, you know, uh, parts of the trails. It just handles so well. It's easy to get through really tough spots. So awesome. No bike is ever done being customized. There's always something else us bike shop people are looking to do. What are some of the future plans you have for this bike? Well, I think really the only thing left to change on this bike, or if you want to call it an upgrade, I wouldn't really call it an upgrade. I just think it's probably the future is going to an Axis Bluetooth shifter so I can get rid of a little bit more on the front end. One less thing up here? One less thing up there would be nice. Yeah. So I think that's the only thing I have left to do with this, with 
this bike. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in today for Don's bike check here on his Orbeo Wild. If you have any more questions on his bike specifically on Orbeo Wilds, Don, you're here most days, Tuesday through Friday. So if you have any other questions, feel free to stop in, ask him questions about his bike. I'm sure he'd love to discuss it more with you. If you want to see more content, check out our YouTube page, our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We have tons more content on both of those, all those sites. Go ahead and like and subscribe down below. And until then, catch you in the next one.